So my sister's car hasn't been running for the past like month and like one week or so. And basically the car has been sitting a lot and the cold weather has came. And the reason why it's been sitting is because the power steering pump has gone out. My sister cannot drive it because it's like literally no power steering. So it's too hard for her to drive it. So I ordered a new power steering pump. It's coming and I just needed to find time for Mike and I to be able to install it. Apparently we're going to do it tomorrow, which is really cool. But that's not what this video is about. This video is going to be about for those of you that literally are so new to the car scene or new to having a BMW and have no idea or anything that could go wrong with these cars. So basically, if you get a service engine soon light, I'm gonna be telling you guys what you can do and just, just not panic and what tools you can have from your home just to figure out what is wrong with the car. Cause sometimes shops can just lie to you and you know basically take advantage of you not having any knowledge about cars and being able to rip you off and you paying big bucks for no reason. So basically what had happened was the car was sitting, it was like a huge snowstorm was coming and I didn't hide it. I was constantly starting and then I kind of just like got out of the you know the routine of like you know starting it every like two days and so I didn't start it for two whole days and then the snowstorm came and then I, I barely came outside for like four whole days and then that basically um meant the car sat for a good week I started it up the next day the car was shaking like crazy um I was assuming that it's an engine misfire or ignition coil misfire the, the engine was misfiring like it was like shaking like crazy my rpms were bouncing a little not nothing crazy it was like kind of subtle but it seemed like a misfire at first and then I saw that there's a service engine soon light so I was confused because I was under the impression that when your ignition coil goes bad or whichever spark plug or whatever it ends up throwing a check engine light but that is not the case it actually ends up throwing a service engine soon light so a little while ago I got a OBD2 scanner which basically stands for onboard diagnostics some of you that know even a little bit about cars this is common knowledge to know about but remember there's people that have no idea what this means I remember when I had no idea what this was and I would love for somebody or to have taught me like this through a video but basically Basically, it's basically this little scanner that they probably plug in in your state if you're in the United States and when you need to pass smog tests or emissions for your state inspection whichever they plug it in to see if the car has any errors and stuff like that and basically I got this thing for a hundred bucks if I can find the link on Amazon I'll show you guys it has a nice little LCD screen and basically I plugged it into the car and it said that it has an ignition coil misfire on um, I ordered the ignition coil. I want to install it today. I'm, I've been super busy and I finally found some time to film this video and make this. Um, I have so many parts for my car and I can't, Mike just finished his final. So the videos are going to start coming in terms of mods. I've just been doing crap videos lately, but I really just wanted to show you guys that don't know anything about like that or just getting into it or don't know too much about it on what you can do and not freak out when you see a service engine soon light because I know that light is really scary. So let's do this. So basically here's my OBD2 scanner. Um, it's the screen's pretty dirty because it sits in my trunk normally, but basically what you do is you take this end and you plug it into the OBD port in your car. Normally it's in this area right over here sometimes. In the F30, it's like right up here. And this car is conveniently located right here. You go ahead and take this cover off, take this cover off, and then take your OBD2 plug, line up the prongs, and then plug it in. Go ahead and put in your key. Don't press the brake button. If uh, it's pushed to start, just turn it on so it's like an access mode or whatever that is. Now you can plug in your OBD2 plug. And then this thing will start running its scan that it normally does. And it can take up to like a minute or two. It's not gonna take too long. But yeah, basically what this does is it's scanning everything that could be possibly throwing an error code in the car. Since mine's throwing a service engine soon, I already did this, but it showed that it was throwing an ignition coil. So I'm gonna fix that really fast. And then we can see if that really does do the trick. And then this is a good way for you guys to see that. You don't really have to be an expert mechanic to fix your car and get it back on the road running. Cause I promise you a shop will charge you so much to do this. So yeah, while that's scanning, uh, I just wanted to talk about how what I was just talking about, how a shop could charge you a lot and basically, you know, charge you way more than you need to pay. And this is just a good way to figure out what could be wrong with your car so you don't have to freak out and then go and end up paying big bucks when it was such a simple thing as just ordering an ignition coil or spark plug or a sensor, just very small things that aren't very hard to do and that there's there's DIYs for all over the internet. Alrighty, so the scan is done. It's asking, is this your vehicle? Yes, it is a BMW. There you go, cylinder two misfire detected. So basically that's just confirming it so you guys can see that's how I figured it out. And now I'm just gonna take the key out, keep it in my pocket and I'm gonna quickly install this new ignition coil. Um, it should take me roughly five, maybe six minutes, nothing crazy and then I'll talk to you guys more about what you need to do. So I'm gonna quickly take the engine cover off and take off the cabin filter and things like that. And then I'm gonna install the ignition coil. We're gonna start up the car and see if it runs well. All right, so I got most of the top pieces off in the, um, the cabin filter. Now it's just a matter of 
taking this cover off. Ah, this is dirty. It's been like 10 minutes. Um, I know it's cylinder two because that's what the OBD2 reader said. Uh, this is cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six. So since it's two, we're gonna yank this one out. Um, I have an OEM um, ignition coil that I got from ECS tuning. I made sure it's the direct replacement and I'm gonna show you guys how you can do that right after I'm done installing this and when we start up the car and it's running nice and smooth. Alrighty, now to remove the second cylinder, just unplug it like so. Unplug the wire for it. This can just come out, put it out to the side. You can just um, grab your extension or something to pull off the cylinder because it is going to be difficult to pull off. It's been there for God knows how long, maybe even the life of the car. So uh, make sure you get something to give you leverage to pull it up. Not enough leverage. Oh, there we go. And here's the damaged cylinder, ignition coil, whatever you want to call it. Um, it looks fine to me. I don't know why this is misfiring, but uh, let's put in the new one and start her up and see if it works. Alrighty, so it was out with the old, in with the new. You want to make sure it's in the same orientation as the old one. Good tight fit. Make sure it sits exactly the same as this little cutout. I know some of you are probably not even going to be doing this on an E90, but some of you might actually get some help from this. Alright, just make sure it's fully down there. Alrighty. This is a little lower than the other ones. Concerns me, but we'll see if it misfires again. Go ahead and plug it in. Make sure it's in all the way, make sure you lock it. And boom, we are done. Let's go start her up and see if uh, she runs smoothly instead of idling like a maniac. Nice little mess we got going on right here. Pretty dirty cabin filter, should be changing that soon. Alrighty, oh, that was a squeaky door. Alrighty, our moment of truth. It is so smooth. Oh my God, it's not shaking even a little. Before, the door was shaking like crazy. The whole car was rattling. I can see this moving up and down, but now it's nice and smooth. Uh, I have to clear the code for that service engine light, I believe, or it might just go away itself. We'll see, I'm pretty sure I have to clear it though. And uh, yeah, my idles are not like bouncing anymore before they're moving up and down. I probably should have shot a, um, what's it called? A shot of how much it was, uh, you know, misfiring, but uh, it's not a big deal. I know you guys don't really care too much about the E90, but uh, that's basically it for this video. The main point of this video and why I made it was so you guys can see how much experience you need to do something as simple as just getting your car back on the road. I barely have any experience in mechanical work and doing things like this, but I knew that I have an idea of what it could have been. I used a tool that helped me a lot and told me exactly what it was, exactly which cylinder it was, and it might not always work out this smoothly, but look, it did. I don't have to go to somebody and first of all, have them charge me to even look at the car then charge me for a part, then charge me for labor. So in terms of the part, there's this website called realoem.com. What you do is you take your VIN number, you type it in the system, and it basically loads up every little thing about your car in, in terms of information. It can t find out when your car was made. It can find out when... Uh, if you guys are wondering why it's ticking like that, it's because it's been sitting so much, but once I drive it around the block, the hydraulic lifters will get some oil in them and it'll stop doing that. But it can tell you the year it was made. I mean, like, it's not just the year, but, like, anybody can figure that out. Like, when it was produced and when it was assembled, when it was done, the exact, like, every little part that's in there, the part number is there. So I'm going to leave the link to that site in the description. If you need, ever need parts, go on that website. It can find you your part number, and then you go onto Google or even ECS Tuning, type in the part number, and it can pull up the exact part that you need for your car in terms of replacement. So... That's really for that's really it for this video guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I need to put this stuff all back together. Um, update on the F30. It's fine, uh, like it always is. Um, I have a huge surprise for you guys. We have a bunch of little things going on and I can't even like spoil it right now because there's too much to tell, but um, stay tuned. Uh, I might have a video upload maybe in the next two, three days so I can give you guys something to actually watch in terms of mods, but that was it for this one, guys. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for the OBD2 tool if I can find it. If I can't, I'll just leave one to any single one. They're not that expensive. They range from like all types of range, like from $30 to $40 to even $100. The one I used was $100. That's because it's a little bit nicer with the LCD screen and stuff. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Peace out.